<laughs> Hi, I'm Anthony Burton and welcome to my world. to art school in 1996 so I graduated quite late and um, before that I was an actor for years and wrote my own plays and directed them and designed them. And so I've had a lot of background in theatre including designing about 15 plays myself and including my own productions which are what I mainly focus on now. I've always been a collector of objects, bits and pieces I'd find on the ground and over time I started to use more and more of them in my paintings and I was always fascinated by zippers for some reason, the different toggles on them and how expressive they could be if you played around with them and I started using them in my paintings as mouths for characters and the whole thing just kicked on when I started to just use anything I could find that interested me. Um, anything that had an interesting texture or colour or could be taken out of context and represent an eye or a nose or a mouth or a limb or some part of the human body that would conjure up a stronger emotional response from the audience than just painting it in a realistic way. Um, the bugs are a, a kind of motif I invented which I made into s paintings that were about 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres on their own but I, I don't do them so much anymore so I, I wanted to keep the character alive so I started to put him in a much smaller scale into a paintings of this kind of size where it's like a bug, almost train set moving through the, through the picture plane. Most of the shapes in the painting are kind of round and more organic to kind of work against the, the actual frame being more rectangular. And I, be, I became fixated with train tracks because to me they could represent these organic body shapes on, on the picture plane and it created this whole narrative where the train track appears and keeps going so the painting has this kind of concept of continuing and this is a, a moment in time of this kind of abstract world and who are these characters and what are they doing with each other and what are they looking at and where are they going, where they come from and having the information kind of coming into the picture frame and leaving on the other end and the characters moving across the face of the painting to me creates this endless narrative where it's more timeless and than timeful. With this painting it's more mapping out the general structure of the painting and then obsessively making it work on a structural colour level for me. With the large heads it's, it's more a kind of emotion, much more an emotional, very, very vigorous kind of process. So I want the painting to work on two levels so it works as a, a narrative, an abstract narrative from a distance but as you get closer it works as an abstract, it becomes interesting because of the colour scape, the tactility, the shapes. So it works on that duality, so it's moving the audience member back and forward all the time like it's a theatrical play, you know, it's, it's forcing the audience to physically engage with it in some, on some level. Uh, I start off doing the eyes and the mouth separately, then I do the background and I start just layering on colour in a very kind of aggressive way, trying to find some way of formulating this emotional history of this face or figure or head. I'm trying to get this complex configuration of what makes up a human being on an emotional, psychological level because I'm trying to avoid being literate and trying to encapsulate the energy that makes up the life force that governs a human being. Tribe was basically trying to turn the, the art of painting into a show with a social message about unification of all colours of humanity into one tribal face, one identity. The five performers I had for Tribe, I gave them um, a script and it, in the script it, it told them their general where I needed them to be at a certain time but it also gave them a very pinpointed analogy of what their colour stood for and through rehearsing with them and the choreographer we put together movements that kind of represented those colours. With, with Tribe the characters come out and do their performance and they're quite strong independent characters but as I paint them into the picture they become elements of the painting. 
like a found object does in, in a head like this or in a face like this where they become in a way they're like a pencil or a um, wallpaper or a bead or or something and they become part of the makeup of, of, the, of the whole face in the end and I wanted the audience to see the process of creation in front of them in real time really happening I didn't want to rehearse it and pre-make this face and work out exactly where it to be at a certain time. I wanted the performers to know where they had to be, but for me to have the freedom to just fall into this um, other world of making this face. Every night the face changed and shifted and its personality developed in different ways because of how I felt when I was making it. With the music I gave Greg the composer a list of words that describe what the music had to sound like. Um, so he had a very kind of clear idea on a, from a, a visual point of view of how the music had to sound. I need the music to be evocative and be able to be tied together from colour to colour but have a through line and Greg did a great job with the music for the show. Performance staff, it was amazing with Tribe to have such a strong response from the audience where people were really emotionally affected by it. And I guess deep down that was a, a goal that I wanted to, to achieve. I didn't want people to think about it, I wanted them to feel it and afterwards to think about it. Because, you know, as a theatre buff myself, the best experience for me is to go to a show and actually be swept away by it and afterwards to sit down and go, my God, that when that happened, that was amazing. When this happened, that was amazing. But at the time when I'm watching it, I'm just emotionally, you know, overwhelmed by the experience. I feel very grateful for the career I've had to date. It's been amazing to keep putting things out there and seeing them eventuate into what they've become. I just hope that it keeps going the way it has been and I can keep, I'm able to keep manifesting bigger ideas that somehow can make a difference in the art world on one level but also can make a difference socially into, into the, community, the wider community and make art become a great tool in communicating ideas that unify people and serve divide them.